Crafting in RuneScape Classic can be as simple or as challenging as you make it. Uh, if you told me that you started a character with the intention of getting to 99 the fastest, I would say come out of Lumbridge, do Sheep Shearer, Goblin Diplomacy, get your way to 10 crafting, pick flax, and then spin bowstrings until your eyes bleed. End of video. Uh, but you would of course end up with 99 crafting and very little to show for it. Uh, so I, I favor alternative methods, different ways of training the skill that don't burn me out. And for the record, I absolutely use every method at my disposal and will share them all with you here in this video. The first alternate method that I'll mention has the benefit of involving other skills that are being trained simultaneously. Uh, and that first one is making silver symbols. Uh, much like many methods, I recommend an alt. So, especially to mine your silver, especially in vanilla in 2023, where you're more likely to find a girlfriend on the server than someone who's actually selling silver bar certs. Uh, it's a struggle. The road is long and arduous, but uh, as opposed to bowstrings, they're sort of one-dimensional. I mean, if done right, symbols can compete with bowstrings to a degree. And what I love about this method is that it also gives you smithing and mining experience. Uh, neither of these methods are profitable at all, really. Uh, it, as the most you're going to do with a symbol, I guess, is to vend them in bulk to the general store like an old school Iron Man. Uh, but on the other hand, bowstrings can only be used for fletching, and, and a bowstring typically doesn't sell on the open market all by itself. There's, there's not exactly droves of players waiting with bated breath for you to list your, you know, 50,000 bowstrings for sale. Uh, but given the fact that RuneScape allows the player agency to choose alternative methods, there are still other options at your disposal. So... Uh, what other methods are there, Matt? Uh, you know, what are, you, what are your options in the end game? More importantly, you know, what, what is the most profitable way to train crafting in Classic if you don't mind spending a little extra time? Uh, I've covered fire battle staffs in a previous video. Like, you can either make the fire orbs from scratch or thieve them from the hero. It's a very slow process, and it's more or less just like a happy accident byproduct of, of late-level thieving. I mean, sure, they're good. They're great, even. But the problem with them is you can only get so many by way of drops and only really go so far. I mean, that and the Fire Obelisk is surrounded by black dragons, and you, you ultimately make less experience from fire orbs than others. Why this is, I have no idea. Uh, you'll have to ask the Gower brothers. Uh, but, but what I haven't covered yet in the video is air battle staffs. Uh, why is this not talked about more often? Uh, well, many, many reasons. Number one, it requires a multitude of cosmic runes. Like, for every air orb made, you'll use three of them. And, and with not many NPCs in the game that offer a cosmic rune as a drop... It's like the main reason for it slipping between the cracks all these years for most players. So that's a big number one. Number two, the prerequisite skills are quite high for this method. They are as follows. Uh, number one, you need 66 crafting in order to attach an air orb to a battle staff. Number two, you need 66 magic to charge an air orb at the obelisk. Uh, and number three, you need a high enough combat level to train melee on like level 66 otherworldly beings, level 58 ice warriors, or level 64 shadow warriors. Uh, you, you have to at least start Lost City to enter Xenaris in order to train on otherworldly beings if you prefer to try them as opposed to shadow and ice warriors. Uh, you also need to complete Legends Quest too, I guess, in order to access shadow warriors. Uh, and then I have a stack of Dragonstone amulets that always helps. Uh, with charging air orbs at the Edgeville Dungeon Obelisk, uh, so that you can quickly tally back and forth. Uh, I also recommend 37 Prayer for protection while walking past the Black Demons unarmed. Uh, and then I have, you will need a good chunk of change to buy battle staffs from the Magic Guild. So in this video I made 500, so 7k per staff times 500 
equals three and a half million initial investment. Uh, but don't worry, you'll make that right back and then some. So otherworldly beings are arguably the most forgotten NPC on the fucking map. Uh, what do they drop? Well, they drop runes that we'll be needing in a pretty high clip. Uh, they also drop, as I've discovered, they hit the gem drop table pretty, pretty hard. Uh, I also got quite a few half keys. Uh, they also have an outside shot of dropping dragon square half, uh, but don't hold hold your breath on that one. I, I think as far as drops, they're kind of like ice warriors, but with the proximity to the bank that almost rivals undead ones. It's just like steps away. The only difference is they're not aggressive, so you have to click them one by one. Uh, but, Otherworldly beings drop one thing that Ice Warriors and Shadow Warriors do not drop. Ruby rings. Now, when I first started out making this video, I thought I had discovered some sort of a meta method. Uh, because ruby rings, are, while not all that valuable on the, on the outside looking in, they are 1,215 GP per high elk. Uh, that, that's like a steel plate. Uh, but... If you look into it further, upon further examination of the wiki, Grum's Gold Exchange buys ruby rings at 200 GP over the high elk value at 1417 GP per. So that even that negates the need to use a second nature rune in this process, and it saves you even more time. Uh, but as I discovered, as I kept going, it really wasn't a meta method. Um... Otherworldly beings drop a lot of law runes. They drop a lot of cosmic runes, chaos runes, and death runes. It's okay money, but it's not the answer that I was looking for. Uh, so I ended up opting for shadow warriors instead. Uh, but during the time that I, I fought uh, 2,000 otherworldly beings, I got 3,998 coins. Uh, gems, I got a lot of gems, two diamonds, three rubies, eight emeralds, 23 sapphires, half keys, I got seven loops and nine teeth, mithril maces, I got 33, and ruby rings, I got 81, 81 rings in 2000. So if this, if this number was higher, this would be such a meta method that it's not even funny. It's just not, it's unfortunately not. Uh, but I had to try, so I went to 2,000 for the video, for the sake of posterity, I guess, if that's even, you know, how you would use that word. Uh, <laughs> uh, and if I were to sell everything but the Cosmic Runes, I would have made 1,015,258 GP, if we go strictly by price guide. But it's why this method sucks. I, I have to kill... 15,000 otherworldly beings in order to make 500 staffs from scratch. Uh, it's 15,000. Uh, it's just not, it's not the right way to go about it, I don't think. I would stick to Ice Warriors if you haven't done Lost City or Legends. And if you have done Legends, go to Shadow Warriors because they have a higher drop rate for things like the Dragon Square Shield. Uh... The only reason to stay at Otherworldly Beings are Law Runes and Ruby Rings. I mean, they drop way more Law Rings than Cos or Law Runes than Cosmic Runes. But yeah, if I, if I stayed for 15,000 kill count, I think I said, I would net 608. I think it, that's math is right. 608 Ruby Rings and 1,898 Law Runes. Right, yeah. I guess you could, like, Camelot Telly with those, you know, <laughs> those law runes netting, like, 200,000-ish magic experience. It's really like a drop in the bucket as far as magic experience goes. But it's, like, the best outcome, I guess, you could get from otherworldly beings. I wanted a meta method. I didn't get a meta method. But during all of that, I had my alt running sand and seaweed from Entrana. <laughs> uh, 
I guess I guess you could also use Daenerys to run sand too because there is a sand pit, but the bucket spawn is too slow, so I had to end up like buying my buckets in Edgeville, uh, <laughs> and then passing them all off and then giving them back. I tried to figure out how the fastest way to do it because I've never done it before, uh, but it ended up being put all the bulk of the work on my alt to get the sand and the seaweed, and then shanty pass trade them all over. Uh, and then do all of the seaweed cooking myself. Seaweed does not grant you any experience, uh, but making all of the orbs does, making all of the glass does, gives you experience. Um, so I think you get 72 and a half crafting experience per, which is why I didn't, I didn't do them all on my alt and I just farm the resources. So in theory, I guess you could just big net fish for all of your seaweed, cook it, bank it, and then run sand either on your main or on your alt. And I guess it's it's, it's a toss-up, whatever you want to do. I know there's people who don't use alts. They just they want to do it all on their main, I guess. So uh, you, to each their own. Uh, but yeah, uh, we went over the tallies from the, from the otherworldly beings. We went over how many I would have to, I'd have to kill 15,000 to get 500, 500 cosmic runes? 15,000. I'm running over these numbers here. <laughs> yeah, 15,000 otherworldly beings to make 500 staffs. Yeah, right. 500 staffs, you need three cosmic runes per, 1,500 cosmic runes in total. It's insane. It's uh, limp work, levels of grind. Uh, so. You know, what did we learn? I mean, I made 1,150,000 GP from all of that, which is like freaking awesome. Uh, but it, it takes a lot of work. And, and I guess one could argue that if you turn simple bowstrings into magic longbows, you would have made more money in that time. So let's do the math on that. I think a good starting point is to see, you know, how fast can you pick flax and then spin a thousand bowstrings? Like, I can do this in under an hour. Some some can do it faster, but let's just make like a thousand an hour as a baseline. Like, currently, I average about 85 magic logs an hour at 88 wood cutting. At that pace, I would get like a thousand magic logs at, in like 11 hours and 45 minutes. So, if we take that into consideration, the time it would take to cut the logs into bows. String them high, Alchem. We're looking at something like 13 hours plus the hour that it took to make the 1,000 bowstrings. I would say getting all of that done in under 14 hours is what I would call an Olympic pace. But let's roll with it. Uh, I would end up, uh, geez, I would, uh, I would end up with 1 million, yeah, 1 million 536. Yeah, 1,536 per bow, 1,536,000 GP, or around 109,000 an hour on average. It would, it would take me like 89 and a half hours to make 7,000 bows in order to use what I've made with crafting, the skill of crafting, to turn it into profit something to think about and make the same yeah make the same amount of crafting experience also you have to factor in the time that it takes to thieve 7,000 nature runes from the gnat chest on an alt that's another good point you know I, I think after trying battle staffs I would actually prefer this it, it's, it's it's so damn tedious it's multifaceted with battle staffs Whereas with bowstring, the gains for crafting are, are quicker. Uh, on the other hand, symbols mined on an alt with both your main and your alt are a nice option too. I, I like both of these methods, and I think I'm going to go with it. I'm going to say these are the best methods. Silver symbols on an alt, and only with an alt, or by trade. Trading silver bar certs, which is never a thing, but it's got. i got to leave it in there. Uh, and then spinning flax and making bows. I'm calling it right now. So for the remainder of my crafting levels to get to 80, I'll be doing half half that and half that. I may, I may get to 79 and then spin my way home. 
Uh, but that is the most in-depth crafting RuneScape Classic breakdown I can give you. <laughs> My brain can give you right now. Uh, spin flax if you want to get to 99 the fastest. I actually recommend picking all of your flax at the Gnome Village ladder and running it to the bank instead of running to that spinning wheel in Gnome Village. So you just bank a bunch of flax running up and down that ladder and then spin all of your flax in Falador because you won't accidentally examine the building in <laughs> in the Gnome Village. It sucks. I, I always do that. So that's my method. And actually, I would also say uh, both RSC Vanilla and Preservation have Android apps that allow you to have the inventory open at all times. So picking flax sucks, but spinning flax on an app is a lot faster if you've tried it. So that would be my fastest way to 99. Pick all of your flax on a computer spin all of your flax on Android, on an Android app, and that's it. If you like the style of video with me talking about meta methods and crunching numbers and talking about the end game, uh, be sure to leave a like, share, subscribe, all that good shit. Uh, helps the algorithm and all that, all that crap you hear a thousand times. All right, thanks everybody for watching. Peace.